Our intro this morning is number 2016, Glorify Thy Name.
reading is from Isaiah chapter 55, 10 to 13. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I was, it was sent. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. understand it, 
The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Here that is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Later, 
why we get the benefit of the explanations in the Bible. This is probably the first recorded parable, at least chronologically. This one appears first among all the parables. So this parable is about the sower, the seed, and the soil. There's nothing in here about weather or water. We'll talk later about that. We'll also talk about the harvest. There's nothing in, uh, in a lot of detail on that. Isaiah explains the water pretty well in that reading. So who's the sower? Most scholars think that Jesus Christ is the sower. Um, it could be his disciples. It could be writers of the epistles. It could be us. After all, we are all authorized to proclaim the word of Christ. But let's go with the, the most common uh, interpretation that the sower is Jesus Christ. And notice how the sower is sowing. He's not using modern farm machinery. There are different ways to plant, but he's using the old-fashioned broadcasting, broadcasting over all types of soils and ground conditions. Now, what's the seed? Well, I think the seed is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. Seeds are wonderful. They're tiny little buttons of life that start from nothing and with care, water, good soil. They bloom into crops, or in the case of trees, large trees. And the seeds, the gospel of Jesus Christ, unfortunately, does not always fall on hospitable ground. But in this parable, it's all about the soil. Now, without getting into a lecture on soil science, you've got clay, sediment, silt, and organic matter, humus. I think that's the right way to pronounce it. Which the Latin word for human translates loosely as from the earth. So we have that connection uh, to the soil. To me, soil equals soil. A lot of gardeners take soil samples, they check for pH and all that other stuff. I would advise us or encourage us all to take soil samples from the state of our soul, the soil. And this parable has four soils. So if we can look at it. Yeah, this was taken outside my house. Route 35 in Maryland. You all know where I live out by the Moses. Okay, this is the along the pathway. And things haven't changed a whole lot in 2,000 years. Along the pathway, the soil becomes hard, too compact impenetrable, impenetrable souls. It's too hot, puddles form, and there's one interesting feature of this. I'm a photographer, so it's a bad photo. Jesus didn't talk about road salt, so we have that extra complicator uh, and that poor soil condition. So the soul can be too hard, too compacted, not to accept the seeds of the gospel. We can ignore it. And the writer Paul Simon's words in the song The Boxer, a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. We have hardened hearts. We sometimes, sometimes get into a snit and don't let those seeds sprout. Have you ever heard the phrase, how happy it is to be miserable and how miserable it is to be happy? That can harden our hearts. There's the character of Eeyore in the Winnie the Pooh books, who's the eternal pessimist. And some people say that Disney actually had to soften up Eeyore for the cartoons. He was that aggressively pessimistic. So it's easy for the birds to pluck up seeds that are cast on that soil when they're sown on pessimism of a hard heart. And the birds, the birds are the symbol of the devil. The devil plucks, plucks up the word of God 
out of our hardened hearts that won't listen to the good news. Can I have the second image? Okay, this is not the best image, but this is uh, landscape pavers to illustrate the rocky soil. And you probably don't need a, a lecture on the, the qualities of rocky soil. Poor drainage. The seed might also fall upon the rocks, which is not going to grow there. The rocks are hard and hostile. It falls between the rocks, and the rocks do trap some water, but the water evaporates. So when we, this symbolizes when we receive the gospel, we flourish for a little while, and then we go home, and life takes over, and the plants dry because they have no spiritual roots. We can look at the next image. Okay, this is a bramble bush. Now, there are actually some berries in there, I think, but that's beside the point. These are thorn bushes, bramble bushes, and what can grow in here? These seeds get choked out by thorns and brambles of life. Spiritual weeds. A weed is an unwanted plant. They rob the crop of moisture, nutrients, and sunlight, and they cause disorder in the garden. And I love orderliness in the garden. I love the rows, the little signs with the seed packages, and everything is just, just so. There's a wonderful stage in the garden that occurs, not quite yet, but in August, maybe late August, when you go out to the garden and the crops have taken over the weeds where you don't really need to weed. But beyond that, we need to almost weed every day. You ever gone to your garden after you've been away for a week? It disorder breaks out. So the weeds and bramble bushes represents the cares in our life. Also, Jesus says, it represents the distraction of wealth or stuff. Helena Rutherford Eli wrote in a book called A Woman's Hardy Garden. I always think of my sins when I weed. They grow apace and are still harder to get rid of. A weed is anything that steals our attention from God. So you have to pull the weeds out by the roots. Weed trimmers are good for a little bit, but they don't really work. They just trim off the tops and the weeds stay there. Weeding, while necessary for our garden and for our souls, is not a celebrated or glorious activity. How many poems have been written about the beauty of weeding? I actually googled songs about weeding this morning. None. So there's none in the history of humankind or on the internet. But we still have to be. So can we look at the next image? Which, okay, this is Lola's garden, which is elevated. It's clear of weeds most of the time. And it's well-prepared soil. So it takes soil and preparation of the ground. We need to clear the weeds and brambles and loosen it and fertilize it and tend it and weed it. Good soil takes work to produce a crop, to receive the word of God. All soils need to allow the crops to set down roots rather than create weeds which overtake our crops. Weeding isn't easy. Life isn't made to be easy, it's made to be life. Now, until the pandemic, we were doing a Sunday morning uh, spiritual study called Tending Your Spiritual Garden under the leadership of Sandy Andrews. And I hope we can resume that. It's, it was based on a cool little book um, that basically looks at every aspect of gardening and how it applies to your soul, including soils, fertilizing, how to deal with weeds and pests in a spiritual context. So it's a cool little book. I recommend you, you read that. I worked at the college for a thousand years. No, it was only 30. 
And about every April, mid-April, late-April, there would usually be a student group come to me and want to set out a garden plot to plant. Now, sometimes it might have even been early May, which is kind of pushing it. So then I'd say to the students, okay, I can find a plot. You know, the soil up on this hill isn't always so good, but who's going to weed your garden while you're away for the summer? And I get greeted with the, the blank stare. <laughs> Crops, gardens, take work. In Isaiah, in his reading this morning, Isaiah says the water is provided by God. It snow and rain come from the sky, water the ground, and return to the heavens. So all that thousands of years ago, Isaiah was preaching about the refreshing quality of water and the abundance of life and the cycle of water. Psalm 65, where we uh, read from this morning, says, You care for the land and water. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide people with grain, so you have ordained it. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. So what is the crop? What is the crop in this parable? We have a well-ordered garden, a well-ordered soul. We have the crops of radishes and turnips and cucumbers and even, yes, rhubarb and parsnip, which my kids call old people food. <laughs> In Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22, he talks about the fruits of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'd like to take a look at one or two of them. Love, the first fruit. Do we love others as Jesus has loved us? Joy, are we truly joyful or just glad? Does our joy depend on the circumstances? And this is where it gets hard, because we have a lot of distractions out there. There's an old saying, you're only as happy as your happiest kid. You could probably extend that to your happiest grandchild, or maybe some of you even to happiest great-grandchildren. But joy gets us through that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 the Apostle Paul says, be joyful always. Joy gets us through life. Patience. Am I thoughtful in my speech and slow to anger? Do I measure twice and cut once? And there are other fruits in spirit. So brothers and sisters in Christ, I'd like to conclude using two famous British orators. The first is Pastor Sylvia Kevin. First time I've referred to that. <laughs> Sounds good, Pastor Sylvia Kevin. A few of us, including Stephanie and Sue Balbert, took a course from Pastor Sylvia on preaching. And she said, end your sermon with a so what moment. So I've searched for this, and I think the so what moment here is the second part of the parable where Jesus says, let all who have ears listen. Now there's a version of the Bible called the message, which the author is very diligent in pointing out it's not a real translation, but the message says that Jesus said, listen, really listen. So we've got all kinds of distractions in our life. Background noise that keeps us from listening weeks. Now, during the pandemic, I've been taking online non-credit college courses, which sounds like a good idea and I'm enjoying them. I put the, uh, my iPhone in my pocket, I go off on my walk and I listen to the professor and I listen and sometimes I'll be 
remind them of something from the prior day's lesson or look at the construction at the BOCI school and the next thing you know, I've missed five minutes of, of the talk, not concentrating. There are other things that keep us from listening. We can hear, but we can't listen. I'm older and I'm beginning to lose my hearing. The first place I began to lose my hearing was the exact frequency of Lola's voice. <laughs> I turn up my TV to 57. I hear, but I don't listen. Take a kid and whisper the words, ice cream. The kid understands immediately the young child. Same child, you say, clean your room and you get the glazed look. Like, I hear you, I don't understand the language you're speaking. <laughs> the best example I can give for this, at my age, I watch the evening news and it, almost all the commercials are about medications. So they give you some medication and they kind of tell you what it's about, what it's good for, and they show these wonderful images by now I'm already zoned out, but like the second half of the commercial is all these horrible side effects, which I, they have a little story going on that you don't pay it. They're designed for you not to listen. So I came up with this list in just a few seconds to illustrate how we get distracted and our lack of concentration on worldly things. If it's that hard for what's right in front of us, it's equally hard, if not harder, for all things spiritual to focus. Now the second great British orator I'd like to close with is Sir Winston Churchill, who said, always conclude with hope. Now, the modern term we use for hope I think is much different than what was used in ancient times. Our term for hope today is much softer. It's like, I hope the Yankees win today, or I hope it doesn't rain. The hope in the biblical sense is confident knowing. We confidently know that if we provide good soil and good care, our harvest from these wonderful words of the Lord, those seeds, those tiny buttons of life, of love and wisdom will grow into the harvest of love, joy, goodness, self-control, kindness, peace, and patience beyond our wildest dream. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for Thy Son, Jesus Christ. We thank thee for the seeds of the gospel and for the wonderful opportunity to grow thy love as we pray, as we prepare our soil and our souls to receive thy word. In thy holy name we pray. Amen. We'll now move into the prayer of that day. Almighty and most merciful God, we beseech thee to draw us closer to thee. You are our salvation and shelter from the storms of life. We are but sheep who stray, and you are our shepherd. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. In our straying from thee, we have sinned. We have done things which we ought not to have done, and not done those things which we ought to have done. Only you know the extent of our failures. You can truly forgive us. As sheep who stray and will stray and will fall again if we miss the mark, O oh God, O oh Lord, please give us the courage to try again. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, reveal yourself to us. Lift the scales from our eyes and heal our spiritual blindness. Help us to see you and the wonderful world you have provided for us. Please reveal your plan for us. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask that you be with those in whose love we live, our friends, our families, and in all whose love we live. We pray for Richard Himes, Dan and Betty, Stephanie Bomer, Phyllis Madison, seniors. 
Rosemary Guzzo, the new babies in our congregation, Alice Deegan, all our children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren and family. We pray for first responders, health care providers, and everyone looking for a way forward. We ask thee for thine everlasting love to be bestowed upon us and them. Please be with all in need of thy loving comfort. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, grant us wisdom. You are the source of all wisdom. We know that all wisdom comes from thee. Please grant us thy divine wisdom as we make decisions in our daily life. We ask for thy presence in all our thoughts and deliberations that we may serve thee. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, align our hearts with thee. You are the way. You are the path. You are the truth and light. Help us to recognize thy will for us. Use us to serve thee. Use us to bring disciples to thee. Use us as a tool for thee. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, strengthen our obedience. We ask that we realize that our prayers to thee sometimes reveal an opportunity to do thy will. Help us to recognize those opportunities to serve thee. Finally, Lord, help us to know thy peace, thy hope and joy in the Holy Spirit. Help us to rejoice in thy love and service in thee. Help us to be aware of thy eternal love and presence in our lives. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us join in the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, in lieu of the collection, there's a, is there a plate back there? Yeah. There's a plate back, and please drop off your offering in that plate. Now let us close again with prayer. O oh Lord our God, the author, the author and giver of all good things, things. We thank you for all your mercies and for your loving care over all your creatures. We praise you for your gift of life, your protection around the box, for your guiding hand upon us, and for the tokens of love within us. We thank you for friendship and duty, for good hosts and precious memories, for the joys that cheer us, and the trials that teach us to trust in you. Bless, Bless our families, we humbly pray. Be with us, us this coming week, and help us to strengthen the ties that bind us together as followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now our closing hymn is, He's got the whole world in his hands, which we all know. A little bit about this song, it was an African-American spiritual, and it is the only song ever to cross from gospel to number one on the popular music chart in 1958 by the singer Laurie London. Now there was a song that crossed to number two, which we did a few weeks ago, called Put Your Hand in the Hand. That was done in 1970 by the group Ocean and later Ann Murray. Now I offer a challenge to Ron Johnson. There's a third one that went to number three in 1969 called Oh Happy Day on oh, Jesus Walk by the Edwin Hawkins Singers. So let us join in. He's got the whole world.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and grant you peace.